A quiz team who've played together for 25 years hope to be lucky and beat the notorious Eggheads in five minutes. It's a tasty lineup tonight. Nana and Andy do Sunday lunch, and then James Martin adds the pudding. Double helpings from eight. Food to satisfy all tastes. Tonight here on BBC Two, Nana and Andy dish up Sunday lunch, and then James Martin does pudding. It's all served from eight. These five people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. You might recognise them as they have some of the country's finest quiz credentials. They are the Eggheads. Well, today's challenging team taking on the awesome might of our quiz champions are the Valley Venturers. The team were all born in the Rhondda Valley and have been quizzing with one another for over 25 years. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Noel. I'm 67 and I'm a retired planning manager. Hi, I'm Mary, I'm 66, I'm a retired bank clerk. Hello, I'm Ken, I'm 48, and I'm a volunteer helper. Hi, I'm Phil, I'm 53, and a retired teacher. Hello, I'm Wyn, I'm 54, and I work for local government. Well, welcome to you, Valley Venturers. That, uh, that uh, fact you've been quizzing together for over 25 years, well, it uh, matches the eggheads, although they haven't been quizzing together against each other occasionally. Uh, so, uh, where do you do your quizzing now? Uh, well, there's uh, pubs and clubs mostly. Uh, there was one, uh, one time a league, which we're, we're not in at, at the moment, but we are, um, we are in uh, a pub and club team. Mm -hmm. And how often do you tend to quiz? Well, every week. Every week? Yeah, yeah. Right. So you kept the hand yeah, in. Yeah. Uh, presumably you've played with and against each other over the years. Yes, yeah. we have, yes. And this is a team of all the talents, then, is it now? It, yes. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, yeah we, we, we'll find out over the next five rounds. OK, uh, every day there's £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the Eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, Valley Venturers, the Eggheads have won the last 12 games, which means £13,000. Says you can't beat the Eggheads. And let's get on straight away, then, with our head-to-heads, the chance to knock out an egghead from the final round. First one's going to be food and drink. Who'd like to play? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. probably me, as yeah. we said, yeah. if uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. first, wasn't it? Yeah. I think, yes, I yeah, think that was a good one. Keep Mary's, I know you're going to pick, um, stick with me. Yes. Yeah. 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 CJ, perhaps? If you um, yeah. Vegetarian, or, teetotaler. Or do you want to go against Kevin? Do you want to go against Kevin on that? CJ. Yeah, yeah. CJ. Okay. Like yeah. yeah. Fine. We're happy with that. Yeah. That's Philip, and then again CJ. Okay, Phil, you're going to play CJ, and I heard you saying there they know you're a vegetarian teetotaler. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> elements <laughs> of it. Yeah, that's right. Actually, he's got a big burger there and a pint <laughs> of beer down by his yeah. seat. Okay, so Phil and CJ, to make sure there's no conferring with your teammates, would you please take your positions in the question room? Okay, Phil, you've uh, chosen the food and drink category. Um, one last thing before we start. We always let the challengers choose. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. Here you go, then. Good luck, Phil. Thank you. In Italian cuisine, what type of pasta is cut into long ribbons? Is it farfalle, tagliatelle or rigatoni? Unfortunately, uh, Italian cuisine is not one of my favourites, I must admit. But I have a feeling that the, the ribbons is farfalle. Farfalle, OK. In Italian cuisine, the type of pasta cut into long ribbons. It's not the best start. It's tagliatelle. Tagliatelle. OK, CJ, first question for you, though. See if um, you can go into the lead, then. Uh, River Cottage in Dorset is the setting for several television series presented by whom? Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, Rick Stein or Gary Rhodes? Well, Rick Stein lives in Padstow. I've no idea where Gary Rhodes lives, but it's Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, River Cottage in Dorset. Right answer, CJ. Well, it means, Phil, you're on the back foot then. Now, let's, let's try and get you off with this one. In Jewish cuisine, what sort of food is challa? Is it bread, soup or dumplings? Mm. Again, one I'm not sure about, in all honesty. 
I'm going to discount red from this point of view. I think I may go for the dumplings. Okay, dumplings in Jewish cuisine, the food called chala is actually bread. Wrong again. It's, it's bread, <laughs> Phil. It's, it's not a great round for you, nope. in all honesty. But CJ, to win the round, which meat is used to make the cooking ingredient speck? Beef, pork or lamb? Well, speck is the German for bacon, so I would think that would make it pork. Doesn't like his meat, but knows he's German. It's the right answer, CJ. You're straight through to the final round. Well, as I say there, Phil, uh, they just didn't really fall your way, did they? No. Never really got started, no. never got into gear. Um, you're not going to be in the final round, I'm afraid. Would you please come back and join your teams? Well, I think a temporary aberration there. I think, I think you've got to put this right very instantly. You've lost one brain from the final round. The Eggheads haven't lost any. But we've only played one round, so plenty of time yet. Uh, Valley Venturers, our next subject is going to be entertainment. <laughs> Who'd like to play? It can't be Phil, because uh, he's just played, but anyone else? It's got to be Noel, Noel isn't it? Yeah, Noel. I mean, uh, Noel is your yeah. uh, favourite time. Yeah, yeah right. you're happy with that, happy yeah. with that, Noel? Entertainment. It's a broad entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah. 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 I think you've got the best chance, yeah. in all honesty. Mary yeah. with history as well, Chris, well, we gonna... Chris on the end, I think. Yeah. Chris, I think, yeah. Chris, yeah. Yeah. go with entertainment? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think so. Yeah. That's myself and Chris, then. OK, Noel is going to play the former brain of Britain, Chris. Uh, to make sure there's no conferring, could I have you into the question room, please? No, would you like to go first or second? First, please. Here you go then, Noel, off you go. Which young actress starred in the 1944 film National Velvet? Julie Andrews, Elizabeth Taylor or Judy Garland? Right, um, I think Elizabeth Taylor. OK, Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. Clapping's already starting here. Yes, the right answer. Well done, Noel. Yeah. Started well done. Na National Velvet. OK, um, Chris, which comedian plays the character of Bren Furlong in the series Dinner Ladies? Is it Julie Walters, Dawn French or Victoria Wood? That's Victoria Wood. Victoria Wood, mm. Bren Furlong. Yep, right answer, Chris. OK, back to you, Noel, for your second question then. Now, who sang Who Do You Think You Are Kidding, Mr. Hitler? The title music for the sitcom Dad's Army. Arthur Lowe, Bud Flanagan or Jimmy Perry? I believe that was Bud Flanagan. Yes. Bud Flanagan. Yes. Know your stuff? Yep, Bud Flanagan's the right answer. I think uh, Chris might have liked that one too. Mm. It's the last thing he recorded about a fortnight before he died. Oh, really? Mm. <laughs> Underneath the Arches. That's it. That was him and Chesney Allen, yeah. That. That's a wild guess, by the <laughs> um, Your question. In the 1966 Clint Eastwood Western, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, who plays Tuco, The Ugly? Eli Wallach, Franco Nero or Carl Malden? Well, I don't think it's Carl Malden, because he'd be the nosy if he was anything. <laughs> Franco Nero's too good looking. I think it was Eli Wallach. Eli Wallach? Mm. Ugly? Mm-hmm. Tuco the Ugly is played by Eli Wallach. It's the right answer. Well done, Chris. Well, the two of you matching each other. Let's see if you get this, Noel. If uh, Chris doesn't get his third question and you get this, you'll be playing in the final round. So, Noel, in January 2006, Watts became the longest-running musical on Broadway. The Phantom of the Opera, Cats or Les Miserables? I got no idea. I'll have to guess at this. Les Miserables. OK, Les Miserables, which is what you're hoping to make the eggheads. <laughs> it's not the right answer, no. It's uh, the Phantom of the Opera. Like Became the longest-running musical on Broadway, January of 2006. So, uh, Chris, a chance for you to win an entertainment round. In which 1956 film does John Wayne's embittered Civil War veteran, Ethan Edwards, say the famous line, that'll be the day? Is it Red River, True Grits, or The Searchers? Well, if it's Ethan Edwards, it's The Searchers. You've got it, yeah. The Searchers is the right answer. Just the one slip there, Noel, uh, has put Chris, though, into the final round. Would you both please come back and join your teams? As it stands, Valley Venturers, you've lost those two brains from the final round, and the eggheads are all intact. So, is this a chance to knock one of them out? Arts and books, our next category. Arts and books, and Mary, Ken, or Wynn to play this one. Arts and books. Me? Yes. 
Uh, Your choices are from Daphne, Kevin, or Judith. Yes, yeah, so I against Judith. Mary, Judith and she'll play Judith. Mary against Judith. Judith. Okay, yeah. on arts and books. Okay, well let's have Mary and millionaire winner Judith into the question room then, please. Mary, you're no mean uh, quizzer yourself. You've appeared on Mastermind, I'm told. Yes, yeah, several times, and last year I got to the semi-final. Oh, fantastic! What was your specialist subject? Um, last year I did um, in the set. I did Rodgers and Hammerstein musicals for the semi-final, but many years ago when I did the first time in um, '93, I did Charlton Heston. Ah, Chuck. Yes, the mighty Charlton Heston. Yeah. Ever met the man? Or? Yes, I did actually. I huh? wrote to him when I was going to appear on, and he sent me a nice list of everything he'd done up to date. And then he wrote and told me he was doing his book tour. So I went down to Salisbury and met him and his wife, Lydia, a nice long chat. He came and put his arm around me and signed my El Cid programme, which I'd kept all those oh. years. So I was thrilled to bits. El Cid, or, or in my mm. case, it would have been Ben Hur. I mean, imagine. <laughs> so you've met him. Whoa, wonderful stuff. OK, well, now you've met the Eggheads as well. Well, they've met you. Um, Mary, would you like to go first or second? I'll go second. OK, Judith, you've been put in. Here's your question. Educating Rita is a play by which British writer? Harold Pinter, Willie Russell or Tom Stoppard? I think that is uh, Willie Russell. Educating Rita is by Willie Russell. It's the right answer, Judith. I'm sure Mary would have got, but uh, this, this is her question, choosing to go second. Here you are, Mary. The Devil Wears Prada is a best-selling novel by whom? Zadie Smith, Helen Fielding or Lauren Weisberger? Well, I don't think it's Zadie Smith because she's British. I'm sure it's an American novel. Um, Helen Fielding, isn't she Bridget Jones, is she? Lauren Weisberger sounds American. So, I don't really know, but I'll go for Lauren Weisberger. OK, Lauren uh, Weisberger, that's the way to do it, though, if you don't know the answer with those uh, multiple choices. Yes, uh, eliminated uh, those two and come up with the right answer. Well, well done, Mary. Mary. Judith, second question. What is the name of the ship in which Long John Silver and Jim Hawkins sail in the 19th century novel Treasure Island? Is it the Pequod, the Hispaniola or the Nostromo? I think that's the Hispaniola. The Hispaniola. Yep, it's the right answer, Judith. Both of you know your stuff. Mary, second question for you. Who composed the 1946 work entitled The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra? Is it Benjamin Britten? Edward Elgar or Gustav Mahler? Well, I'm sure it's not Mahler. I'm almost positive it's not Mahler. Um, Edward Elgar, I think 1946 is a bit late for him, but I've got a pretty good idea. It's Benjamin Britten. OK, The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra was composed by Benjamin Britten. Right answer. <laughs> Judith. Who wrote The Nutcracker and the Mouse King, the story upon which Tchaikovsky's ballet The Nutcracker is based? E.T.A. Hoffman, Hans Christian Andersen or Lewis Carroll? It was definitely not Lewis Carroll. I think it's Hans Christian Andersen. Um, wait, no, do I think that? Hang on. No, I think, I think I'm going to go to E.T.A. E. Hoffman. You're going for E.T.A. Hoffman now, there's no changing that. No, well, it's lit now. It is lit, and uh, you're right. You can't change it. And it is the right answer. E.T.A. Hoffman just got that, Judith. Just, yes. Ooh, <laughs> nearly a, a bad slip up there, but in the lead. So uh, you've got to get this, Mary. P.G. Woodhouse's Bertie Wooster is a member of which fictional club located on Dover Street in London? Is it the Winchester Club, the Drones Club, or the Diogenes Club? Oh dear, not a great fan of uh, P.G. Woodhouse. Um, Winchester Club, I think that sounds as if it is a real club. Diogenes, I don't know. Oh, I think I'll plump for the Drones Club. OK. You sound almost resigned there, Mary. Mm. <laughs> I'm not really sure, but drone sounds like a bit like Bertie Wooster, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, and that's why it's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Mary. The two of you having a bit of trouble with your third questions, but you've both got them right, which means we go to sudden death, Mary. We now remove those multiple choices you've been seeing up to this point, just to make it a bit harder and to sort out a winner. Judith first. Which play by Peter Schaffer depicts the destruction of the Inca civilization? by Francisco Pizarro. That is The Royal Hunt of the Sun. 
Royal Hunt of the Sun. Yeah. Very good. That's the right answer, Judith. Okay. Well, Mary, your question. The Land That Time Forgot and John Carter of Mars are books by which writer of adventure stories? Oh, gosh. I've never heard of the second. I know The Land of Time Forgot was made into a film. Adventure stories, let me think. Um, I think I'll have to go for, let me think, um, Robert Louis Stevenson. Okay, to stay in the game. It's not the right answer, Mary. And there's a link here to, uh, I think, an embarrassing moment uh, you once had. Uh, does that ring oh. a bell? Oh. Stripper Grands? Yes. Um, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice like, Burroughs, oh, Tarzan, the writer yes. of Tarzan. Oh, I, I know no. you once, uh, somebody once hired a Tarzan stripper oh, didn't they, uh, to, yes. to work do for you? Yes. yes, The Land of Time Forgotten, John Carter of Mars, are books by Edgar Rice Burroughs, also, as we know, a writer of the, the Tarzan stories. But it means because you uh, put Judith in first, uh, that's the game over. Judith is through to the final round. And, and Mary, we won't be having you there, I'm afraid, either. So uh, would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, uh, Mary and Noel, you've just been squeezed out there by the eggheads in uh, each of your rounds. It now means that you've lost three Brains Valley Ventures from the final round, and eggheads still haven't lost any. So uh, pretty important you knock one out now, I'd say, uh, to give you some kind of chance in that final round. Um, our last head-to-head, -head, then, is history. And who'd like to play Ken or Win? History. Yeah, OK, so it's history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's winning yeah, his own yeah, yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. That's winning his own then afterwards. History are probably Daphne rather than Kevin for history. Yeah, yeah. yes. Do you agree on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's Ken and against Daphne. Oh, Ken against Daphne oh, on history. That, that we are then. Should be quite a good round, I suspect. Let's have you both into the question room, please. Good luck, Ken. And uh, you're a bit of an egghead yourself, aren't you? Uh, that's what you've called me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but tell us uh, about it. Was the what Mind Sports Olympiad you? That's won? right. Uh, it was organised by Tony Buzan to bring together all the mind sports in the world, and the first one was held in London in 1997 and I'd be fortunate enough to become world champion. Well, what are mind sports? I mean, is it just quizzing or, or no, are it's, other, it's, other, th other tests? Of well, it includes ability? classical games like chess, Go, and other games from around the world, Awari from Africa, and it also contains Scrabble, modern board games, Triolet, Paku, and even card games like Cribbage. Right, well, some real credentials there. OK, well, Ken, do you want to go first or second? Um, I'll go first. It's history. Here you go, Ken. Which sport was famously played between warring British and German soldiers in no man's land during an unofficial Christmas Day truce in 1914? Rugby union, football or cricket? Well, it can't be cricket because um, the field wouldn't have been very flat. <laughs> and uh, rugby union are probably the wrong type of shells. So I think the people had a great kick around, so I'm going to go for football. Football, yeah. yeah. Cricket might have been a bit unfair on the Germans, though. But, uh, well, I don't know. I'm not sure they were too concerned about that at the time. Um, football is the right answer. Yeah. OK, Daphne, first question to you then. By what name were the LDV, or the Local Defence Volunteers, better known in the Second World War? Bevan Boys, Home Guard or Wrens? They were the Home Guard. Dad's Army. Yes. Yeah, the right answer there, Daphne. So, one apiece. Ken, second question. The historic agreement known as the Old Alliance principally involves Scotland and which other country? France, Italy or Germany? Well, Italy wasn't really a country until the turn of the last century. Germany was more an alliance of federal states. So, by a process of elimination, I'm going to say France, Dermot. France. France and Scotland, you say, joining up for the Old Alliance. It's the right answer, Ken. 2-1. Yeah. Yeah. Daphne, the phrase, no taxation without representation, has become synonymous with which 18th century war? The Hundred Years' War, the American Revolution, or the English Civil War? Well, the only one that took place in the 18th century was the American Revolution. <laughs> Well, if you know that, not much of a test then. No. Uh, there you are, that's the right answer. <laughs> that's the way some of the questions come. OK, Ken, uh, third question for you. 
The Battle of Stamford Bridge in 1066 took place near which city? York, Bath or Colchester? 1066 was the Battle of Hastings, but Stamford Bridge is not near Hastings. And if my memory serves me right, it's quite some way away. So this is a bit of a guess. I'm going to go for York. OK, the Battle of Stamford Bridge in 1066. Well, it wasn't in Chelsea, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> it was in York. It's the right answer, Ken. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Daphne, to stay in it. In British history, which king married Catherine of Braganza? Charles II, Edward VI, or William IV? Charles II. Well, you just pause and then answer. Yeah. It's the right answer, Charles II. Well, what a great round, Ken. We go to sudden death. The two of you are so good. We've got to sort a winner out, so we're removing those multiple choices. Here you go. Fidei Defensor is the Latin term for which title? Given to Henry VIII in 1521 by Pope Leo X. Fidei of Faith, Defensor, Defensor, so Defender of the Faith. Defender of the Faith, you say? It's the right answer. Okay. Very good, Ken. Know your history. Daphne, to stay in it again. Who was the mother of the Roman Emperor Nero, who he had put to death after he came to power? Oh, I always get those muddled up. Um, <sighs> Agrippina. No. Sorry. No, it's the right answer. I'm just, oh, I'm just thinking, how do you get them? Yes, uh, Agrippina, Agrippina the Younger. OK, there you are. On we go, then. You two are very, very good at this subject, Ken. Which British soldier, nicknamed Old Careful for his concern over the welfare of his men, was the commander-in-chief of the British forces during the Indian Mutiny of 1857? That history takes me back to my school days, so... He was a very famous general, but I'm getting Robert Bruce stuck in my brain at the moment, so I've just got to clear my brain and get his right name out. Um, well, I know if I don't guess, if I don't say anything, it'll be terrible, and the moment you tell me, I'll know. Um, general <laughs> Edwards. Okay. <laughs> Edwards. No, no, I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. It's, I think, as you know, it's uh, not the right answer, Ken. Yeah. Uh, Eckhead, tell me. Colin Campbell. Campbell. Campbell then. Colin Campbell, oh. Baron Clyde, also in charge of the famous Thin Red Line at Balaclava. <clears throat> so, uh, first slip-up in the entire round. It means, Daphne, you can win it. Which structure situated to the north of Hadrian's Wall stretches from the Firth of Clyde to the Firth of Forth? That would be the Antonine Wall. Is it Roman? Um, yes. Doesn't really matter. It's the right answer. The Antonine Wall is to the north of Hadrian's Wall, which means, after what a battle there, it means you've squeaked through, Daphne. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, this is what we've been playing towards. It's time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, Noel, Mary, Ken and Phil from the Valley Venturers, would you please leave the studio? So, Wynne, you're playing to win the Valley Venturers £13,000. Egghead, you're playing for something which money can't buy. Your reputation. As usual, I'll ask each team three questions in turn. This time the questions are all general knowledge and, Egghead, sir, you are allowed to confirm. <laughs> When the question is, is your one brain better than the Egghead's five? And when, what do you want to do? Do you want to go first or second? Um, I'll go first, please do, mate. Win. first question. What is the diameter of a standard compact disc? 120 millimetres, 220 millimetres or 320 millimetres? Well, I'm well into music, uh, do you, mate? I collect CDs. I collected vinyl records prior to that. Um, but this question really isn't based on music, is it? Um, <laughs> well, it's got to be a shot in the dark, obviously, because it's difficult to, to, uh, to picture those distances. Just uh, So we'll go for the one in the middle, 220. OK, 220 millimetres, which 
The wind would make for a large compact disc. It's 120 millimeters. Sorry about that, That's but right. uh, slip at the start there. But let's see how the eggheads do with their question. According to the Department of Health, what is the minimum number of portions of fresh fruit and vegetables you should eat a day to ensure a healthy body? One, three, or five. Mm. According to the Department of Health, what's the minimum number of portions of fresh fruit and veg you should eat a day to ensure a healthy body? Five a day. We've been doing five. 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 Yeah. five portions, the Department of Health recommendations of fruit and veg. It's the right answer, eggheads, which means when we need to get you started here. I'll go second, please do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, try this. Here you are. In which country is the Interlagos Formula One racing circuit? Brazil, Spain or Hungary? In which country is the Interlagos Formula One racing circuit? Well, one of my interests is sport, although I must, be, I must be honest, I'm not that interested in motor racing. Again, another of my interests is geography. Ah. Um, and I am aware, actually, that the uh, Brazilian Grand Prix is staged at Interlagos. Interlagos, you're saying is Brazil. Excellent stuff, Wen. There you are. That's better. One on the board. Good. Now you can relax a bit and hope the eggheads get one wrong. Uh, eggheads, which hero from Greek mythology travelled to the underworld to rescue his wife? Odysseus, Orpheus or Orestes? Which hero from Greek mythology travelled to the underworld to rescue his wife? It's Orpheus. So. Orpheus? Orpheus, yeah. It's right, eggheads. So two to you. Uh, win. I mean, you've got to get this. In Scotland, what is the Trossachs? A lake, a waterfall or a valley? Um, well, I, I was under the impression that the Trossachs were a range of hills in Scotland. Uh, but that isn't an option. So, of the three options, I'll go for valley. Okay. Well, valley has to be surrounded by hills, doesn't it, to, mm -hmm. make, a, <laughs> to, to yeah. make the hills and to make a valley. Uh, Trossachs, yep, that's the right answer, valley. Good man, now you've really just got to, just got to hope here. Uh, eggheads, what type of creature is the Gila monster native to the southwestern US and northern Mexico? Lizard, spider or bear? What type of creature is the Gila monster, G-I-L-A, native to the southwestern US and northern Mexico? It's a lizard. It's the right answer, Egghead. You have won. Ah, when just with just with that CD question, we'd, right, we'd be yeah. deep into sudden death. Um, yeah, I yeah. think you were going as well as they were. I, I think you know the entire game uh, seems to have just turned on on the odd question. That's you know, right, yeah. Formidable players. I think if we did this again, the uh, the whole result might be very different. But um, the eggheads have done what comes naturally to them, and their winning streak continues. I'm afraid you won't be going home with the thirteen thousand pounds, which means that the money rolls over to our next show. Eggheads, congratulations. When will someone beat you? Join us next time to see if the new challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads. £14,000 says they don't. Until then, goodbye. Do you have the knowledge to tackle today's eggheads teaser? If so, you could win this electronic dictionary. Simply answer this question. Who won the 1970 Eurovision Song Contest for Ireland with the song All Kinds of Everything? Is it A. Johnny Logan, B. Dana, or is it C. Linda Martin? Good luck! To be in with a chance of winning, call 09012 212 424. Lines close at midnight tonight and calls are charged at 25 pence. Representing contemporary Scottish cooking in France next here on BBC Two, it's Great British Menu.